Hey there everyone, I hope you find this video helpful. This video will be briefly touching on the topic of communication models. Communication models seek to explain the communication process. Even right now, this is a form of communication from me to you who is watching this video. We partake in different forms of communication process every day. Wow, that's a lot of talking and listening. Anyway, let's get started. Communication models and what we can learn from them. What we will be covering in this video. The brief background about communication model. The examples. Application of the model communication models functions and conclusion what is communication and what is the model we refer to communication communication is a two-way process of reaching mutual understanding in which Participants not only exchange ideas, feelings, and information, but also create and share meaning. Model Models provide a simplified view of something to be studied. We choose those elements of interest and use the model to help us frame questions and predictions. Ugh, what did they even mean? So many words. It's alright. Just remember that communication is where we create and share meanings including information between both sides. It could be both verbal or nonverbal communications like using hand gestures. For models, they basically represent a simplified guide for us to understand a process. With that being said, so what are the examples of communication models? A few examples that we would show are the Harold Laszlo's model, the Shan Weaver's model, the Wilbur Scrum's model, the Burlow's SMCR model. Reminder! Please note that these are not the only models available, but instead, only some examples chosen. Number 1 Harold Laswell's Model of Communication 1948 In this figure, we can see five elements, which is the communicator, the message, the medium, the receiver, and effect. Who says what in which channel to whom with what effect? This was introduced by a political scientist named Harold Laszlo in order to show the importance of each element and what would happen if they were to be changed depending on the scenario. Excuse the badly shaped examples, but these are supposed to be individuals. If you remember the Harold Lazarus model, it would be who says what, in which channel, to whom, with what effect. Of course, the effect would be what is the impact of the message received. Number 2 Shannon Weaver's Model of Communication 1949 Shannon and Weaver 1949 wanted to offer a model consisting of five basic elements which were the information source, transmitter, noise, reception, and destination. Here are the elements explained in slightly more details. Information source. Who initiated the conversation? Where did the source of communication start from? Transmitter. The vocal part of the message, like how I am speaking about this message towards you, the viewers. Channel. The medium used to flow the message, like radio, 
public speaking or this video that you're watching. Noise. Message interruption like loud environment noises when you are watching this video, perhaps. Reception. The hearing part of the message. Example being presence and listening to the message given, which would be happening if you are still here and understanding the message through this video. Destination. Who is receiving this information? In this case, it would be you, the viewers. Number three. Wilbur Scram's model of communication, 1954. Wilbur Scram, 1954, made a few models to address different questions. This is one of the models developed around the idea of communication as a system of constant feedback. With that, the communication keeps happening under this constant cycle. Compared to the previous models, this one shows that the sending and receiving process is happening continuously between communicators. The messages given by each communicator are affected by the feedback of another communicator. Number 4 Burlow's SMCR Model of Communication 1960 This model focuses on four parts, which is the source, message, channel, and receiver. Whatever elements that could affect these parts can impact the communication process as well. For an example, the communication skills possessed by the sender source can affect the content of the message being received by the receiver. Yet again, we have a poorly shaped example, but these are supposed to be individuals having a conversation. So the channel here would be hearing. Here we have the source and the receiver. Let's say the source has a poor communication skill. So then this will be translated to the message. The message might have a poor content. When it is received by the receiver, they might not understand. Are you bored already from all this information? Don't worry, just a little more to go. Keep watching because we will be reaching the end soon. Now that we recognize how some of the communication models look like, what purpose do they serve? Gerbner 1956 identified four purposes served by models. The organizing function, heuristic function, predictive function, and measurement function. They sure sound complicated, but I'll try my best to explain it. Organizing function. The model shows what elements are included and how do they relate to each other. Basically, when you have models, they are way more easier to understand, just like how I explained earlier in this video. Because by looking at models, they just show you short phrases or just one word instead of really, really lengthy sentences that could get you more confused. Heuristic function. The model helps people to identify new perspectives and theory regarding communication. For example, like the Burl's SMCR communication model that has the source, the message, the channel, and the receiver. And down there, we can see a lot of different things like the hearing part, the communication skills, the content, the feedback. And just by changing one of them, we can see how the result also changes. So that happens when you use a model that's way more easier for you to see. Predictive function. The model helps people to make safe predictions about the result or certain attitudes coming from the available elements that they see in their communication. For example, like the earlier scenario I gave about poor communication skills. If I have a poor communication
notifications here throughout this whole video, I can already expect that some of the viewers are lost and they don't understand the meaning that I'm trying to convey to this few minutes video. Measurement function. The model can show people about the importance of certain elements and how to measure a certain dimension of the communication. Looking back at the Burlos SNCR communication model, we get to know that under the source aspect, culture, knowledge, communication skills, they are very important. And that's mostly because it's stated in a much shorter phrase or word inside the model so we can just see how the communication process flows. Communication models sure have lots of purposes. Do you see yourself using these models as a guide in the future? Remember, the models shown here are only a few examples. They are more provided by other passionate individuals about communication. Be sure to look them up! Communication models have a lot of similarity between them and yet they are also different from each other. Do you still remember the models that were shown earlier? Each of them had a certain question in mind to answer. Although this video could still be lacking here and there, I hope that it has helped you, the viewers, in some way. Thank you for watching!